What's up everyone? Welcome back to Not The Shop. This is just my apartment. It's been a little while. Uh, I've been at school studying aerospace engineering and have been away from most of my tools so I haven't been able to put out a video in a while. But I now have enough free time that I've decided to take the tools I do have here and make a small little project that combines a few of my other interests you may have noticed from other videos. So if you've seen my Iron Man helmet, you may know that I'm a Marvel fan. Or if you've seen my cocktail muddler video, you know, I like to make cocktails. So I'm going to combine those two here, and I'm going to make a Baby Groot mint planter. So I want to have fresh mint leaves for cocktails sometimes, and I want to plant those in something more interesting than just a pot. I found this 3D model on Thingiverse for a Baby Groot planter. So it's Baby Groot, but his head is a planter. So I'm going to be 3D printing that, then I'm gonna be painting it to make it look film realistic, and then just putting a mint plant in it. So without further ado, let's head into the slicing software and then I can show you my brand new 3D printer. I'm here in Kira, we've got the model all loaded up. I have actually scaled this down to about 80% because it's pretty huge and I've determined that's roughly the size I want. If you're curious about my settings, we're going at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. That's because I want the highest quality I possibly can out of this thing since it's gonna be painted and I don't want any layer lines to show. Basically saves me a lot of work in the painting stage. Just scroll through this quickly if you're interested. I am using the lightning infill pattern just to make this go faster. So actually I'm printing at 150, which is pretty fast, but I have done some tests on my printer and it can't handle it for this type of print. This is gonna take a day and five hours to print, so I better get started. I'm good. This right here is my brand new Ender 5 Plus 3D printer. I'm really liking it so far. It's been working perfectly. I do have the silent board in it, so it's a lot quieter. This is basically right next to my bed, so I want it to be as quiet as possible. But as you can see, it's got a nice big bed, which I won't use all the time. But as you can see here with my gold-plated Iron Man helmet, it is big enough to print a helmet in one go. So make sure you're subscribed because I will be doing that. If you've seen the gold Iron Man helmet video, you know I had to print that in about 12 pieces to get it all printed. Let's get this thing powered up. I've got the G code here on the micro SD card. Slot that in, get printing. As this starts, you'll notice that you can only hear the fans because I got the silent board upgrade down there. And soon I'll be upgrading the fans too to make this thing basically as quiet as I possibly can. So I also have this tiny Groot that is, it's the same model, just scaled down a bunch that I used to calibrate the machine a while ago. And I'm thinking, why don't I turn this to a shot glass at the same time? So there's a little bonus project within this video. We're also gonna get a Groot shot glass. Baby Groot is now done. Came out really well, it's very, very smooth, much smoother than any other printer I've used. There are a few little spots where it didn't quite print properly because I had the speed going so high and you can see the, the uh, supports are not that clean looking. But overall it's good, any little imperfections that came from printing it fast, I'll be able to get rid of no problem drain the paint. Let's head to the paint shop. I am Groot. I went ahead and cleaned up all the support off camera just because you don't need to watch that. But if I were to print this again, I would actually go a little slower just because we got places like this. It's not gonna show up well on camera, but there's some holes. But there, there's some more in there. Uh, it's not a big problem, I can fix it pretty easily. But everywhere else it turned out really well, especially the face. Very smooth, so I have minimal effort to smooth that out. I've taped them to this piece of cardboard for painting so I can get every angle without touching them. I'm just gonna go head outside and hit it with a primer. With the first layer of primer on, you can really see all the areas where the printer kind of messed up. I probably should not have run it that fast, but luckily all of that will be completely invisible by the time it's fully painted. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this Bondo spot putty in all the spots where the printer messed up, smooth it out, sand it, and then I'll do another coat of primer, and then it should be ready for paint. So when I'm doing this, I'm kind of simultaneously sculpting and just filling in all at the same time, so I can do less sanding later on. I don't want to tear it overboard, but... It's where there was easy to put on since I didn't have to mix up the bondo. It's my first time using the non-mixing kind, so a quick, give it a quick sand and then hit it with another coat of primer. I have now got the surface finished down to where I like it. 
I have lost a little bit of detail, especially the chest, but I can definitely bring that back with the paint if I need to. But all layer lines, or at least most of the layer lines are gone. So to the point I don't think anyone will notice. So now it's time to hit it with the base coat. I'm gonna be using this brown, and then I'll switch over to the other paints, give it a little more detail. Well, I completely forgot to film it, but the base coat of brown is now on. As you can see, it looks pretty good. It's a little darker than I thought it was gonna be, but that's okay, I can I can work with that. I'm Groot. I'm not a raccoon either. I am Groot. Raccoon, whatever. So I'll just be using these acrylic paints because it's what I was able to get, and it should work fine to do all the highlights and the eyes and everything. As you can tell, I am using a snifter glass for my brush water. Uh, it's because it's what I had lying around and this one has a big crack in it, so I can't drink out of it anymore. So I've got my Groot reference. I've got the mint plants that are gonna go into it, paper towels, brushes, and entertainment in the form of Big Bang Theory. Cut to the time lapse. Let's get to painting. took like an hour or two but I believe my paint job is done so I just gotta let it dry and then hit it with a clear coat I'm pretty happy with this it's a little darker than he actually is in the movie but I think that's fine in this case it looks pretty good it might be hard to tell from the time lapse but my main technique was watering it down brushing it on and then wiping it off and I used the same paper towel for the entire thing so this in a sense became a secondary paintbrush so as I wiped it off, it would also put some extra paint on. So I'm gonna hit this with a clear coat. It should make the colors pop even more. And then I gotta waterproof the insides. It's time for the clear coat. I'm just using this matte clear Rust-Oleum. And it should protect it and also make the paint just pop a little more. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but you can see it is improving it. Oh, by the way, this is a friend of mine, Tree. I am Groot! I am Steve Rogers. The paint job came out really well on this. Really happy with it. Clear coat is dry now. Now the problem is there's going to be water in here, both for the plant one and for the shot glass one. So I need to waterproof the inside because I don't want to ruin it. So my current idea, I'm not actually sure if this is going to work, but I got some just 100% silicone and I'm going to just smear it on the inside. I might have to do multiple coats, but we'll see if it works. I do have drain holes in the bottom just in case it leaks so I don't get water accumulating inside. I'm just gonna squeeze a bunch out and just smear it around with my finger. Huh. Turns out the silicone I got is white. I thought it was gonna be clear. That's a problem. And that's why you read labels. <coughs> now I gotta run to the hardware store, find some clear silicone, because I want it I don't want a bunch of white on the inside. So this will be used in something in the future, who knows what. So I'm gonna put affiliate links in the description for everything I use to make this, including the 3D printer and the model. The model's not an affiliate link, you can just download that for free. But this thing's coming out to be way more expensive than I thought it would be. But eh, it's worth it, it looks cool. I finally went out and got the right thing. Clear, 100% silicone. I can finally finish this project. I'm like two or three weeks late finishing this project just because of various other conflicts and getting the wrong materials and things being late. But it is finally time to waterproof this thing. My basic technique is I'm gonna put on a rubber glove, use my finger, and just smear it all around the inside of both of these. And I'll probably do two or three coats just to make sure that it's fully sealed so I don't get any leakage into the inside. I do have the drain holes in the bottom just in case that does happen, but I'd like to avoid getting any like mold buildup or anything on the inside. And a quick rubber glove tip, if you're gonna be using them, use a size down from your normal glove size They'll fit a lot tighter. As you can see, there's basically no wrinkles and you have a lot more dexterity and you can use the smoothness of the glove if you need to on things. All right, so here we go. I'm actually not entirely sure this is gonna work, but I really hope it does. Basically, squeeze a bunch out and then just start coating it. Really hope I get all of it too. 
I think I might just do this technique too. Squeeze a bunch in there, get the finger in there, and really just spread it around. Make sure it gets into every corner. And because this will get pretty boring to watch, I will cut the video here and just show you when it's done. The silicone is now dry. I ended up not worrying about how smooth it was, so it looks a little rough on the inside, but I have now tested it, and it is watertight on both of these. Now all I gotta do is take my two mint plants, stick them in here, and then I can use the mint plants to make a delicious cocktail. I got these two mint plants from Safeway. Uh, nothing too special about them. I've just been keeping them in these jars until this project is finished. So all I'm gonna do, take it out. I'm gonna try and get both in here if I can. Uh, it looks like it might not actually fit. Interesting. We're gonna try anyway though. Yeah, it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all situated and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. And there we go. That is two complete baby groups. One is a shot glass and one with a mint plant in its head. I trimmed the plants a little bit to try and get them to go straight up because they were kind of drooping off at the side and it looked a little weird. But I will be putting a very nice high quality picture on Instagram. You can follow me at it to the woodshop there to see that. So it is now time to use these things. So let's head to the bar. He hates heads. On anyone, not just himself. One minute you think someone has a weird shaped head, the next minute just because you realize part of that head is the hat. All right, welcome over to the bar. It is now time to use the baby group planter in the manner in which it was intended. I will be making a whiskey smash, which I've actually never made before. So it'll be fun. We're gonna start by expertly cutting this lemon into wedges without a cutting board, even though there is a cutting board right there next to me. You see it? There's two of them actually, but I will not be using a cutting board just to make it more interesting. I'll be taking all of these lemon wedges, tossing them in, and I'll be using the muddler that I made in a previous video. You can go and watch that video after this one. This is a walnut cocktail muddler that I made. So what we're gonna do is just gonna lightly muddle this lemon. Now I'm going to pick off a couple mint leaves. So you can see we're actually using this now. Got a little handful of mint leaves. I'm gonna toss those in too. Muddle them in too. Now for our main ingredients, we'll be using a Maker's Mark bourbon. It's one of my favorites. We'll be going two ounces of Maker's Mark. There we go. That is two ounces of Maker's Mark. And this, even though it says Jim Beam, is actually just simple syrup. So it's a two part sugar, one part water by volume mixture. We're gonna be going for a little under a half ounce. Just about like that. All right, now we got our fancy rocks glass here. I'm gonna throw some ice in the shaker. We're also gonna get out of the ice mold. I'm gonna get a nice piece of roughly spherical ice. Could be, that mold could be a little better, but project for another day. Now we are going to shake this up. And going to double strain it over the nice spherical ice. Double strain, make sure we get any of the mint leaves, the ice, any bits of the lemons out so you don't get any pulp. There we go. And to finish this off, we're going to grab a nice mint sprig here. Just that, we can give it a little smack. Brings out some of the flavors. We're gonna toss that right on the edge. And there we go on a nice whiskey smash. Now, of course, we've got to try this. Okay. That is a very tasty drink. And before you get down in the comments, don't panic. I have not forgotten about the Baby Root Shot Glass. You gotta try this out too. But before I do, make sure you like and subscribe. You don't wanna miss any more cool projects from me. And if you do like and subscribe here, before the end of the video, I will use the Baby Root Shot Glass to take a shot of Don Q151. For those who don't know, this is 151 proof rum or 75.5% alcohol. So it's very, very strong. I got it for lighting cocktails on fire. Maybe I'll do a video about that sometime. You can see the giant fire warning on the back. But 
If you like and subscribe now, I'll take a shot of this. Pour it out in anticipation of this. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, I can tell. Make sure you do it. Come on. Like, subscribe. There you go. Cheers. I am Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yep. I am Group. What's that? He says, welcome to the frickin' Guardians of the Galaxy. Only he didn't use frickin'.